In this video, we're going to be making some plaques for a local car club. I've been getting some questions recently about the cam programming side of things. So in this video, there's a long, unedited, and probably boring 20-minute segment where I'm talking to myself while programming these parts. If you're familiar with CAM, I'd encourage you to skip it, but if you're new to this world and interested in getting into machining, you might find it useful. Then we'll go over the probing and setting up our tools in the Centroid Acorn Control and finishing off with the machining of these parts on a converted Precision Matthews PM30 MV bench mill. Everything here is designed in SolidWorks and the integrated CAM is in HSM Works, but if you're using Fusion, the steps are going to be the same since the same company, Autodesk, makes both products. All right, so these are the plaques we're going to be making. They're two inches by four inches. Actually, this model is 1.9 because the stock is two inches wide. And I'm just going to have a little engraving on them. We're making a few. They're each going to say different things here. This is just a sketch because we're going to trace this in cam. So there's no real feature to the sketch. And what I like to do before I start the cam is to actually make the stock in CAD. I don't like... I don't like defining the stock in the job. I like to make a body. I, I don't know, maybe it's force of habit, but a little more foolproof, just my opinion. This will make four and an eighth. And this is, the stock is two inches wide. And it's half an inch. We'll go ahead and extrude this. It's, the stock is half an inch, but, so we'll put in half an inch here. But we want to actually offset it from the top plane by 15 thousandths. And just make sure we're offsetting in the right direction. Yeah, we want to offset that 15 thousandths. So this is going to be our stock, and it's important we uncheck this merge result. Because if we don't, our other body is going to be disappeared and sort of absorbed into this, this feature we're making. So we're not going to merge the result. We're going to say OK. We're going to scroll up to our model. We have two different bodies. I'm going to just like to name them. This here is going to be our model. And this here is the stock. Okay. So we go over to CAM. This is the HSM CAM, or HSM Works in SolidWorks right here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start a job. Uh, the model, we're going to delete the stock because we know the model's the model. And then for the stock, we're going to do from solid. And we're going to go ahead and select our model. Or sorry, our stock. Then... I mean, this is the right orientation, but we will, I like to use X and Y normally. Again, just force a habit. Whatever face you click on, you know, off of it is going to be the positive X direction. And then for the positive Y direction, we'll click here. And then for, we will use a stock box point top center. So our origin is going to be right in the middle of the stock and at the top. And if we sort of we can see that it's off the model as 15,000. So that's all lining up. That all looks good. So we'll accept the job. And then from here on out, I like to actually hide the stock. So we have access to our model. All right, so the, uh, I guess the first thing we'll do is the, uh, we'll do 2D adapt. We'll do some 2D adaptive clearing we're going to use a three flutes. I think it is tool 28. Where are you? Yeah, 383 flute aluminum end mill. And I generally, my machine maxes out at 3000 RPM. And other than the fly cutter, which I run at 2500, I pretty much run everything at 3000 in aluminum. Um, we'll do two and a half thou feed per tooth. That's all looking good. And the ramps. That's good, lead in, lead out, and that's all looking good. So we'll go over to the model tab. We want to trace around this perimeter. We don't want to machine cavities. We want to machine on the outside of that blue line, so we deselect machine cavities. Uh, we're not going to use any stock contours. The stock contour is that orange box, which by default is the contour of the stock, so that's what we want in this case. And so we'll go over to the heights tab. Yeah, so we want to go from the stock top, and then we want to machine below the selected contour. I like to do from selection. I don't know. I think it's like a mental thing where I like to have the controls. I know, you know, this is the selection I want you to go, let's say, 15 thousandths past. So 15 thousandths below. And we can see here our bottom plane is sitting 15 thousandths below. So that's all good. And then here's kind of where I like to just accept the job. 
and just to see, you know, what we've got. And this looks, this looks good. You know, here it's doing everything in one pass. So we're going to go in here, we're going to edit it, and we're going to put in the correct step overs. By default, the step overs are generally a little bigger than I like to use on my little machine. So I am going to go to the full depth because this is, it's a, it's a quarter inch here. So we can go the full depth, no problem. And we'll use step overs of, let's say 50 thousandths. Uh, you could probably do a little more here, but we'll do stock to leave. Definitely. I want to leave 10,000 skin all around, but on the floors, I want to leave nothing. So that's all looking good. And in the linking, there's not much we have to do. So let's see if that changes the toolpath. Yeah, it changes the toolpath a little bit. Looks like it's gonna take two steps in the corners. You know, this is we this is 1.9, so there's 50 thousandths extra per side. So when our step over is 50 and we're leaving 10,000 skin, it makes sense that there aren't kind of two passes. But in the corners, it looks like it's gonna take its time and do a little more, which, you know, we really don't have to. So let's change that. Let's go to our step overs and say, let's take 65,000 step over and that should get rid of that extra kind of little wispy cut. Yeah, which we don't need. Okay, that's all good. All right, let's do another 2D adaptive toolpath. So by default in HSM works and in fusion cam, all these feeds and speeds carry over from the last operation, the tool carries over. So that's good. We want to clear out these corners next. We'll go here. We'll create a sketch on this plane. All right. All right, we'll convert these entities. Then, you know, you can even do this and say convert these entities and come in here and chop these off. It's probably the fastest way. Come in here and in here, convert these entities, go to power trim to trim all this stuff off, trim all this stuff off. You hit OK, hit OK. All right, and then now we'll jump back into cam. Go in here, edit this. We're going to delete that contour. And then we are going to select the sketch. We don't want to machine cavities. And for, oh, sorry, not the stock contour. We want to select the sketch here. And we want to reverse that. All right. We want to machine all that away. And this time for the stock contour, we actually want to use this because everything else has been machined away. So that's looking good. Now from here, not yet. We're going to use the stock top because we haven't faced it anywhere for the top. And then for the bottom, we're going to do from selection. We're going to use this here. And then in the passes tab, we are going to do stock to leave, but we're going to do nothing on the floors. And we are going to leave again, 10 thousandths here. And then this time we want to do, let's do 65 thousand step over is okay. Not much in the linking and let's see what we end up with. Oh, open contours are not allowed when machine cavities is okay. So that's fine. Let's select that. And it is giving us what we want here. So that's good. Let's do a stock simulation. Let's slow it down a notch because this happens really quickly. All right, so the first thing we do, yeah, we chase around. And there we go. So that is mostly done, the bulk shape. But remember, we left a 10,000th skin. So what we still want to do is um, we want to do a 2D contour to clean it all up. So a 2D contour, we are going to use the same tool, same RPM. Same feed per tooth. We can slow it down a little bit to get a nice finish. So this is a one and a half thousand feed per tooth. And then for the model, again, we are going to first clean up the outside. We're going to reverse this. It's running on the wrong side. There we go. We want to clean up the outside. So that's all good. And in the heights tab, again, we want to go this time we're going to go yep, from the stock top, from selection, and this time I'm going to do only 10 thousandths of an inch past the bottom of this surface because you don't want the end mill dragging on the floor when we're trying to get a nice finish. 
doesn't make much of a difference, but just as a little bit, an extra step, I guess. Okay, that all looks good. Let's see what we end up with here. Now, one other thing I like to do here, see it leads in and it leads out, but it contacts at the same point. And to get a little bit of a nicer finish on these contours, I like to do uh, a finishing overlap, which is in the linking tab. So where is it here? Uh, or sorry, it's not in the finishing overlap. It is here. Sorry, here. Yeah, there we go. So 50 thousandths is fine. And now when we accept that, you'll notice see we have this flat here. So it starts and ends. There's an overlap, a finishing overlap of 50 thousandths. So from here to here, there's 50 thousandths there. So that's all good. Now we're going to do one more contour. So 2D, 2D contour. Same tool, same feeds and speeds. See here, it carried over one and a half thousandths feed per tooth from the very last operation, not from the first two. Then for our model, we're going to do the sketch here and we need to reverse them, right? We don't want a machine on this side of all of them. We want to reverse it to machine on the outside. So that's all good. And sometimes what happens, you know, we sort of got lucky here um, that they're all on the inside. If a few of these are on the inside and some were on the outside and we hit reverse, well, they'd all reverse and then we'd fix the ones we didn't like, but then we'd break the ones that we did like. So sometimes you have to make multiple sketches or you can use the selection manager, which has been a little bit glitchy for me. Um, in here. But anyway, this is going to work just fine. We want a machine on that side. That's all good. Now for the heights tab. Yep, from contour is right. Again, this is a mental thing for me. I think I like to go from selection, select this plane, and all these ears are on the same plane, zero offset from that plane. And then yeah, from the stock top. So that's all good there. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. There's no finishing overlap in this case. So this should be all good. Let's see what we end up with here. Yeah, that all looks good. Come in. And so I designed this and made sure that these uh, contours were slightly bigger than the radius of a 3 8 cutter. And you can see there's a really small rad here, but there's still a rad. So it's not going to kind of come into that corner and chatter or anything like that. That's a really nice thing of being able to design the parts you're going to machine because you get to kind of if this was tighter, I'd have to switch tools, which for me is kind of a big deal because I don't have a tool changer. So I like to do this with as few tools as possible and uh, being able to design the part really helps um, to use as few tools as possible for things like that. Okay, so now we're gonna face the part. We're gonna go a facing operation. And then this time we're gonna use the uh, the fly cutter. So here tool 21 is the Tormach Superfly. I've got it set at three inch, so it kind of shows as a three inch single flute face mill. So that's okay, we'll select that. And then this face mill I run at 2500 RPM. It's an unbalanced tool and I don't like to run it too fast, though I have run it at 3000. It just, it sounds a little funny. I'm sure it's fine. Again, it's a mental thing, but that's okay. All right, so we will do 2500 RPM. Uh, here, feed per tooth, we're gonna do 10,000 feed per tooth. Lead in is going to be also 25 inches per minute. Lead out 25 inches per minute. Ramp plunge can be 25. Ramp can be 25. That's all good there. Okay, stock contours. That's fine. Now, because there's no material on the outside, you know, we could use this. Doesn't really matter here. Um, so the top is from the stock top, the bottom's from the model bottom. That's great. And what I like to do is do a actual, um, where is it here? So I like to do climb only because on my mill, the chips get thrown into the corner instead of out into the middle of the garage. And then I do like to do about an inch and a half or an inch and five eighths extension to get the cutter all the way past here so that the trailing edge of the cutter clears the end. And then we will do a, we'll go 2D milling and we're gonna do a chamfer around the edges to clean up the edges. So we're gonna use a chamfer mill. This is a 3 8 two flute chamfer mill. We run it flat out at 3000 RPM, just like most other things. And then I find with this thing, going slower really makes a big difference on the finish of the chamfers because you know, where it contacts the part is not exactly at the full 3 8 diameter. So slowing it down helps to give a little bit of a nicer finish. Um, we're going to chamfer this first. Again, we got to reverse this. We're on the wrong side. It's all good. 
And then here we want to do, we'll start with, you know what, let's do a 20 thousandth chamfer. And then let's offset this. Now I'd like to do a hundred thou usually, but I don't know if we have the clearance here. We're going to have to see if we're all good. I don't know how deep these are. So I want to make sure we don't hit this floor. But anyway, that's all fine. Where are we here? Okay. And again, finishing overlap is nice. Let's do 50 thousandths finishing overlap for the same reason we did it on the 2D contour. Let's click OK and see what we end up with. So let's see how close we're coming to the floors. Okay. So I think this is 100 thousandths. Um, that's a little more than 100 thousandths. So yeah, because the, the extension distance is past the bottom of the chamfer. But anyway, this is going to be enough clearance here for us. If we want to increase it a little bit more, that's okay too. We'll go here instead of 90 thou, we'll go 80. We'll accept that. Now we're a little bit higher, a little bit more breathing room there. So that's okay. That's all good. And then we still have to put these holes in. And I like to use the chamfer mill to spot drill. So here we're going to go into drilling, drill. We're going to use the, uh, the chamfer mill here to do it. And we're going to select, these are going to be our holes. Now, I don't know, we might actually hit, yeah, I don't know this is going to work. We might actually hit these edges. We might just have to go ahead and drill right away. Or what we could do, yeah, we're going to ignore this. What we could do is just move this. So this is where, you know, because the, look, let's do a, let's go back in here. I'm going to go and spot drill. So I haven't set the heights yet, but let's go to the heights tab. We're, yeah, from the whole top, I like to say from the surface, this is going to be the top of the hole. And then from the whole bottom, no, we're going to go from the selection, which is this. And I only want to spot it. So, you know, 50 thousandths of an inch spotting is fine here. What, what is this? Oh, sorry. Minus 50 thousandths of an inch. That's fine. Yeah, we're not using a drill for a drilling operation. Do we want to ignore that? Yes, we do. Let's do a stock simulation and see what we end up with here. Okay, so see here, when we spotted this drill, you can't see it because we've got the model. So you know what, let's go up here. Let's hide this model just for a second. So see this green, when we spot drilled this hole, we are actually affecting the chamfer. So we can't spot the hole here, but what we can do is spot it before we cut these ears out and drill the hole first essentially, which is not a bad idea, but that is gonna mean that when we wanna do the chamfer, we're going to have to switch the tool back to the chamfer mill. So um, I don't have a tool changer. I try to avoid things like that when I can, but here it's going to be necessary. And we've gotta show our model again here. Okay, so, you know, we did the spotting and it's real easy. We just drag it up in the tree and it can be, you know what, it can be the first thing that we do. We can do this sort of thing. We just have to make sure to go in here and let's change our heights because we want to actually, um, the top is going to be from selection. It's going to be from the model top or sorry, the stock top or is the stock top. Here we go. It's going to be from the stock top. And then the bottom is also going to be from the stock top, except it's going to be minus 50 thousandths um, above the stock top. So yes, we want to ignore the warning. After spotting them, we've got to do another drill operation with the actual drill. And this is where I cheat a little bit. Um, I just have one drill. Okay. I actually forget how big of a drill I need. But anyway, let's spot these holes or pick these holes. Okay, and then in the heights tab, <clears throat> no, we're gonna go from model top. And then we're gonna do, or sorry, from, let's do stock top. And then stock top here as well, or sorry, stock bottom. Stock bottom, we do wanna break the drill through. Actually, I'm lying because I'm going to face off the bottom. I'm going to do from selection. 
select the bottom of the model. I'm not going to do this. We're just going to go minus a hundred thousandths. That's too much, but a little bit more breathing space there. Let's check our plunge speed. So plunge 40, that's going to be too fast for a small drill. Let's go uh, plunge at 10 inches a minute, retract at 40. That's all good. Now let's go here and do um, deep drilling full retract. So this is peck drilling. We can do, yeah, we can do a hundred thousandths uh, depth. And you know what, let's do, I don't know, 70 thousandths because this is a smaller drill. These are going to be clearance holes for a number six screw. So I got to actually go and see what size drill to put in there. But I cheat because I don't have like a tool changer or like dedicated um, pockets or I, and I really only have like one drill chuck that I use. I have another one I can use if I need two drills for a job, but um, I just load up the right drill that I need. So this is, it's kind of a no, no, I guess, but um, it's just a little bit less work on the programming side to have all these multiple drills to choose from. I just, I know number eight is always my drill. <clears throat> and that's kind of what I, what I go with. So this is going to peck at, um, 70 thousandths and it's going to go down at 10 inches a minute. And that's going to retract at 40 and then down at 10, retract at 40 and down at 10 until it gets to the bottom here. So this all looks good. Pecking reduction. We don't want to do any of that. That's when you peck a smaller and smaller distance, the deeper and deeper you go. That's good for deeper things, I guess, but we're not going to do that here. So that is looking good. Let's see. And we're also going to sneak this up right underneath the spot drill. So we're going to spot and we're going to drill. And then that's when we're going to get into the adaptives and the contouring. Then we're going to face it. <coughs> Chamfer. All right. And then the last but not least is we've got to do an engraving. So um, 2D milling, we're going to do the trace option, we're going to use a 1 16th inch four flute ball nose. I think it's this one. Okay. And then so definitely 3000 RPM and feed per tooth. No, we're going to go 1000 feed per tooth. Cutting feet rate is 12. Yeah, lead in, lead out. So we don't want to do any ramping. And that's actually really important here. So we'll first select our geometry which is this sketch here. Okay, so that's all good. Um, and it's really important we turn off lead ins and lead outs. Otherwise, we're going to have those really weird, like if we don't turn them in, or if we don't turn them off, check this out. When we do a stock simulation, let's speed it up just to get to the end. Oh, what happened? It didn't put in our, oh, it didn't put in our, let's see what happened here. Oh, because we didn't put in a depth. We were just tracing the sketch, but we actually want to go a little bit further down. So where is it here? There it is. Axial offset. We want to change this to five thousandths of an inch and we're going to hit. Okay. Now let's do the stock simulation and see what we end up with. Okay, so with lead ins and lead outs on, you know what, it hasn't done it here, they might be off. But as you're leading in, you know, you lead in and lead out, you get these little, you can get these little wisps, we're coming in and oh, yeah, you see them here. So see that these weird pockets, this is where the tool comes in and out and you get for every time you contact the part, you're going to get these weird kind of um, you know, these scallops where the tools entered. And if we take a look at the tool paths, you'll be able to see it. Well, you can't because the solid body is there, but let's hide it. Let's go back to the tool path. Yeah. You see these little lead ins. So the material starts here and it starts leading in and you don't really want to see that. Now we're going five thousands deep. So they're really small and they're not terribly noticeable, but you'll be able to tell, um, you take the part off. So we'll go to linking. We want to turn lead ins off. We want to turn, oops, we want to turn lead outs off. Let's hit okay. 
and there you see it's gone it just goes right in and then it goes right out on all the letters and that's kind of that's going to be what we want let's turn our model back on okay and let's do a stock simulation here one last time let's save it let's see what we end up with all right and then we're going to take this thing over to the belt sander and we're actually going to brush the top of it with like 150 or 200 grit it uh engraving in aluminum it really it doesn't really pop because everything is so shiny now when you use the the fly cutter the fly cutter leaves a really nice finish and it's going to leave this top like a mirror and then engrave in that and that will the engraving will pop a little bit but i find when you brush the surface anything you engrave really pops out a little more so um that's what I'd like to stick to. And then now really, we're just gonna flip this thing over and for an op two. So let's create another job. Yeah, so that is the model we wanna use, except this time we want to use, we're gonna do X and Y axis again. This is gonna be my X. This will be our Y up here. And then we'll do a stock box point, but we want to do bottom center. So we're actually going to use the top of the jaw as our zero, and we'll go back to the middle again. And this should all be just fine. Oh, and we also, we don't want to do a relative size box. We want to go from solid. And the solid we want to use, we go up here and select our stock so that's all good and then the only thing we're going to do here is we're going to face off whatever's left with the Tormach Superfly yeah we'll run it at 2500 rpm that's fine uh, yeah, cutting feeder no this will crank this up to 10 and you can go faster here but I find 10 is plenty fast, especially for a small part like this. Yeah, lead in can be 25. Lead out can be 25. Ramp can be 25. Plunge can be 25. Well, there isn't really any plunging here. Stock contours, you know, that's fine. We'll use the stock. That's what it's going to be. And then top height is going to be, yep, from the stock top. Yeah, and then the bottom's gonna be from the model top in this case. And then here we're definitely gonna take multiple depths. We're not gonna do all that in one shot. Um, yeah, 40 thou is fine. And then, yeah, we'll do a finishing step of 10 thousandths an inch and 25 inches per minute is gonna be okay. Again, we're gonna do climb because it throws the chips in the right direction and I think that's it. Let's see what we end up with here. Oh, you know what? No, we like to do this, this pass extension here. And here we go. So you see, you know, we're stepping down 40 thousandths every single cut, except the last one, that's 10 thousandths, which is exactly what we wanted. We can run a stock simulation here. All right, well, it's not very exciting anyway. Here, let's lower the speed. Stock simulation. There we go. It's just going to take off the stock 40 thou at a time until we get to the very bottom and it'll be done. And what I really like about integrated cam now is I'm making a few of these things. So I can just go over to this sketch and I just, I edit the sketch. I change the text. I go back to the cam. I regenerate it and it automatically regenerates as opposed to having to do, you know, multiple sketches on a step file or importing multiple step files and doing all the cam and repointing the chains. When it's integrated, stuff like this is just a lot easier, um, which is why I don't use Fusion anymore. I use the HSM works in SolidWorks. Um, yep, yeah, so that's it for the cam side. So these are all the tools we selected in cam to make our part. From left to right, we've got a 964th drill that'll make the clearance hole for the number six screws. Then we've got the Tormach Superfly for the facing operations, the 45 degree two flute chamfer mill for spot drills and edge chamfers the 3 flute 3 8 aluminum end mill for the adaptive and contour operations, the 1 16th 4 flute ball mill for engraving, and then finally the probe for setting our work coordinate offsets and tool setting. So before we can start machining, we've got to do the tool setting. That's just telling the CNC control exactly how long each tool is. 
In the world of CNC, this is called the tool offset. So to do it, we're gonna pick a reference surface with the probe, then touch every tool off on that reference surface. I like to use the top of a one, two, three block as the reference. So in the control, we hit setup, tool, and then offset library. Then we wanna create that Z reference at the top of the one, two, three block. So we hit Z ref and then auto to use the probe to find the top of the one, two, three block. When we hit cycle stop, the probe comes down to touch the block before automatically updating the Z reference height. The first tool offset we're going to measure is for the 1 16th ball mill. It's tool number 18 in our library, so we're going to manually jog the tool down until it's close to the top of the block, then incrementally step down until we can't slip the 1 2 3 block under the tool. When we get there, in the control we'll hit manual measure, which will automatically update the selected tool 18's height offset. You'll know it's been updated when the value changes and when it shows up in green. Then we just continue and do the exact same thing for the rest of the tools in the job. This is kind of a lot of work because we don't have a tool setter or an automatic tool changer. If we had a CNC machine with a tool changer and tool setter, it would just be a matter of loading all the tools into the automatic tool carousel and the machine would take care of the rest. It would cycle through the tools one by one automatically, touching them off on the tool setter and then automatically updating the offsets. So after all the tool sets are in, we'll take our two by half inch stock and cut it to our four and one eighth inch length. We'll mark the aluminum with a caliper and throw it in the saw. Let's load it up in the vise and probe it into position. In CAM, our first operations work coordinate offset is at the top center of the stock. So we'll start by finding the middle of the stock in the Y direction by going to setup, part, and then probing in the control. We'll run the web probing routine and jog the probe into the position in this little graphic, right below the part in the Y direction. The width of the web in this direction is the width of the stock, so 2 inches, and let's overshoot it a little bit. The clearance amount is the height the probe will move up in the Z direction from its initial position. We'll move up by 3 eighths of an inch. When we hit cycle start, we get a message in the control to verify the function of the probe. I hit it with my finger to make sure we're getting probe trip messages in the message window. And this just helps to prevent a crash in case I forget to plug the probe in. We hit cycle start again to run the probing routine. When the probing cycle finishes, the probe parks itself right in the middle of the Y travel, conveniently letting us set the Y position to zero. We do the same thing in the X direction, repositioning the orientation of the probe in the graphic to be to the left of the part in the X direction. Then entering the length of the stock in the X direction, we hit cycle start and find the middle of the web in X before setting it to zero. When that's done, we head over to the Z axis and hit auto to find the top of the stock. So the point where the stylus is touching now is set to our X0, Y0, Z0 origin of the work coordinate offset, which matches perfectly with what we've got in CAM. The CNC controller that runs the motors on our machine needs a G-code file to do its job, so we need to translate all the toolpaths we've made into G-code using something called a POST, or POST processor. A POST is just a file that you can think of as a translator that turns toolpaths into G-code that your CNC controller will understand, so if you're buying a CNC machine, make sure you have a POST processor that'll generate G-code your controller will understand. I'm running a Centroid controller, and the POST happens to be included in the list of POSTs that come with HSMWorks. I'm not 100% on this, but I think the list is the same in Fusion 360. That being said, the more bells and whistles your CNC machine has, so think things like a tool changer, probe, flood coolant, spindle control, a fourth axis, and so on, the more certain you'd want to be that you've got the right post. For example, I haven't tried it, but if I program probing routines in CAM, the generic Centroid post that comes with HSM works might not support it. So I'd have to modify the post processor to include probing functionality. I won't get into how you can modify a post because I've got no idea how to do it, and it's one of those things that if you screw up, can very easily lead to a crash. But if you see your CNC controller listed in this dropdown, chances are you'll be off to a good start. Alright, so with the Centroid post selected, we'll post the G-code for our Centroid Acorn CNC controller. When we do that, HSMWorks shows us the G-code file that we generated. We'll then load it into the control and we see a preview of the toolpaths our controller is going to run. On the same screen, we see the control asking us to insert tool 3, the 3 8 45 degree chamfer tool, which is the first tool in our program we use to make the spot drills. We insert the tool, and when we hit cycle start, the machine starts running the first operation.
Next, the control asks us to change the tool out for the 964th drill to put in the clearance holes for the number 6 screws. Next, the 3 8 3 fluid aluminum end mill comes in to run the 2D adaptive clearing operations. First, roughing out the main rectangular shape, then moving up to clear the ears for the mounting screws, and finally running the 2D contour finishing operations that'll remove the ten thousandths of stock that we left all around the part. Next, we come in with the Tormach Superfly to face the top of the part. When that's done, we load up the chamfer mill and put a chamfer all around the perimeter. And the last step in this operation is engraving with the 4 flutes 1 16th inch ball mill at a depth of 5 thousandths. And it looks pretty good. Let's flip it over and probe it into position for the second operation. We run the facing that removes stock from the back. And the part's done. We can make all the other parts by changing only the sketch that drives the engraving, because everything else is the same. We repost the code and run the program just like we did here. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video.